back into the studio. It's been ages and I apologize for that. I've been busy and I've been having heaps of fun. Today's video, I want to show you this exciting, wonderful new way that I've figured out how to decoupage with fabric and not using any glue. So for today, we'll just concentrate on these three ladies, which I've done three different ways. I will actually do this lady so you can see how it's done in real time. This is all we're going to use is this acrylic polyurethane. It doesn't smell, it's very nice. A brush and some fabric, which I'm sure we've all got lying around. This particular lady was inspired by these three old ornaments. I've had them for years and years and they're actually vintage bonsai ornaments. They inspired me from the colors. I just love that mint green going with the yellow. And so that was the inspiration. A lot of the color tones were picked out uh, because of this. So she's got a little hat on and this is the fabric scraps. When you look at the fabric scraps, the relief is just amazing. You have very little of it. And as you brush on the acrylic polyurethane onto the object that you're going to do, you actually go straight in with your scrap of fabric. That will soak it up. And as you place it down, you put another layer straight over. So that will become evident when I do this lady. These fabrics were actually, had them for years and years, had a bit of a research and this was just the top I had, but definitely the same fabric. It's like, from what I can tell, it's crepe silk. From the 50s, 60s, going into the 70s on kimonos, some is pure silk. The scraps are many and varied. I never thought I would use them. So just marvelous. Never felt anything like it. I'm not really an expert on fabric, of course, but this is the crepiness. Colors are sublime. Lots of orange and tangerine. So I looked them up on the net because I've had these for about probably 20 years. And they came in with a heap of fabric that I had no idea the origins of. And on some exploration on the internet, there are people still selling. These are scraps of kimono. So if you look up kimono, scraps, you will find people are selling bundles made out into this sort of sizing and they sell them 10 to 50 pieces at a time. Absolutely wonderful for this sort of situation. The crepe silk soaks the acrylic polyurethane up really well, which is what you're going to need. The other fabric that works really, really well is gauzy fabric. So for this one, this isn't on yet. I'm going to do it for you. This is just sticking to itself. Some of these have got blue tack on them. This is gauzy. This is silky and gauzy, probably 100% polyester, but whatever it is, it's got a lovely sheen to it, which is why I chose this. This was a top that I didn't wear. Love the colors. So she's like an all over floral. To do here, I made here in white concrete. Then I masked her face out and sprayed her black. That means that when you cut out the pieces, you don't have to be careful. You can cut them out very roughly. The black's going to be absorbed into the black background, so you don't have to be careful. And it took very little time to do her. Now, as for this lady, she's like my forest lady. She's inspired by this piece of material here. I'm into lizards and this is our native New Zealand tuatara and quite a rare beastie it is. So here we've got the tuatara, up comes the forest. Bit of hand painting went on just, just to do the brand Around here we've got a few trees, birds, made the necklace out of flowers, the cap out of flowers, painted this green as you can see by the photos. So this one's sort of in between the idea of an all over floral fake mosaic or a hand painted forest lady. So back to the lady we're going to do today. She's going to be so easy and so quick. One of the reasons I just love this way of doing it, it's so much easier than messing around with glue adhesives, sticking it down, making sure the edges have got. I would say that I practiced with a bit of material before doing this for you and the weight of the material is important. I went from really gauzy silks like this sort of gorgeous one. I mean, it's almost see-through, absolutely easy. That is going to just soak up the acrylic and go dead flat go round the corners and be very easy to use. The other thing that seems to be working really well, weight-wise for the fabric, is the cotton here. This is just a pig I'm doing, a pig's body. It's all done by painting the pig pink. Its ears are going to be leather and suede here. This is just one piece of fabric. So I did cut these flowers out in their entirety. Lovely bit of cotton, a few more examples here. Roses are a great thing, aren't they? They're just very easy. This fabric, for example, has got a wonderful sheen on it. Try not to get any florals that are too big would be a thought. Cheapest way to get the material is to go through your wardrobe. Tops I haven't used for years. Again, the lighter the weight, the easier 
and the less relief you're going to have on the object you're going to do. So this again, very gauzy, very vibrant, very small for me now too, so of no use at all. There's a lot of this stuff too, quite dark, but on a black background or a dark blue would look lovely. Almost see-through, works really well. Now this is a lovely dress I used to wear a lot, but it's not worn out. Absolutely love the pattern. Probably as big as you could probably go, but this is my sort of stylized look that I just used to love. If you were going to go out and buy some fabrics to do this with, the cheapest way you could go is scarves. Again, all sorts of weights material, but absolutely lovely range of floral, birds, butterflies. You could just do amazing things with all that lovely fabric. On the back, I've actually used the label of where the top came from. I was rather shocked when I saw it. What label? in the world, anywhere in the world. I had the top for about 20 years and I found it was about 70, 80 miles from here <laughs> in a shop in the Auckland city, vintage shop. And they don't call it that anymore. They call it Smooth as F and all their labels are now Smooth as F. So if I've had this 20 or 30 years, it could be, I don't know, 70, something like that. But naughty label, quite fun. Quite surprised to see it was so close to home. <laughs> Bearing in mind, you might not all have a concrete lady you want to take apart with fabric. Here's some more examples, which I, I'm sure you're gonna have around the house. Well, maybe not sure, but I'm pretty sure. Went in the shed and I found these four enamel teapots. They were really dirty and I cleaned them. Got four different sizes. Went to do this one in blue and white, being a blue and white enamel teapot. But as I just grouped some fabrics together, some old tops, blue and white is a classic. Probably do it in a mosaic fashion. Get some blue and white out of that lot. Here we've got some more blue and white, nice and subtle. And if you think of it as a triangle, or a square oblong. The reason I would suggest trying a faux mosaic look is you don't have to think about the composition, you're just looking for random. It's a very simple way to start. If you don't have any enamel teapots lying around, maybe you've got a vase. This, because it's old and really quite cruddy, but in one piece, very sound. I'll probably just paint it cream and then use very small flowers, little roses or something. Here's a vase I haven't used, just gold. I think the gold background could come up really nice. We have some shoe lasts and somebody gave me these. They're probably 1970s and they're a very heavy old resin. I'm going to do them with the Asian or the Japanese kimono pieces. I'll get the smaller bits, do a little collar around here, probably keep these little bits of leather that they've used to pad it out. Here we've got a stool, very rough, raw edge, rough as guts. My little grandson is trying to get up to the, wash his hands in the basin, can't reach, he's three. I'm going to give this a really good paint, probably just glue down a couple of edges but not spend any time on it and I'm going to paint, I've got some bright blue left over. Big pot of bright blue. Here's this fabric I've had for a while. Very beautiful. So bright blue, probably this picture blue. And on the top, I'm just going to cut out a piece that's big enough about here. Use the acrylic polyurethane all over, lay it down, put a split in the edges, turn it round and upholster it with the acrylic polyurethane. So I think this will come up a treat. I did have a couple of these bodies in the shed. I know these little thin plastic ones are about $5 each. It's a woman and a man. I'm gonna have some fun with them, with the uh, fabrics. I've had this big piece of fabric for a long time. It's a peacock. I have a mosaic peacock in my bathroom. A very boring door going into the bathroom. And it's an old door. This is folded in half, so we've got two peacocks. And in the two panels of the old door, I am going to cut this right down the middle. It's just a little too big, so I'll probably lose a little bit of the border. It'll go right down to the bottom. Big two old panels, and that'll be the entrance to my beautiful peacock bathroom. What I would worry about just putting this straight on to the wood, the old brown wood, is that it would kill the colours. So keep the colours vibrant and bright. I'm going to use a nice bright blue behind as it's the predominant colour in this one. Failing that you don't have any enamel teapots, shoe lasts or whatever in your shed like I have, maybe you have a tray or two. I just Run down to the shed and got this. It's got some hay on it now. This is a really ugly breakfast tray. It's got a stand, it's for bed. So when you're in bed, you don't spill your tea. <laughs> Okay, we can have fun with this one. That's a great tray. This is a, a beautiful tray. It's uh, one of these made in Italy. They they were souvenirs. They did picture frames. They did everything. Got very old. I'm going to do something beautiful. Probably put it on the wall that way. Oh, I don't I haven't decided on this one. Now, this has been a lovely tray in its time. It's a big tray, which is a great start. It's tin. 
So I'm gonna dedicate this beautiful tray, gorgeous shape, nice size, to doing a Frida Carlo extravaganza. I've had Frida say for a while, I'm going to probably start with some of this material. I'll probably superimpose her head with another one. I have another couple of skulls. We have skulls there. We can change her head to this. We can overlay the material multiple layers using the acrylic poly and I've been obsessed with Sacred Hearts for a long time. So we're going to do this in the next video. This will be one of the ones I run through. Just an old top with some skulls on it. Yes, bring on Frida. She'll be coming in all her brightness and glory. And as for now, we'll just get on with the lady so I can show you how to do this. It's just so simple. The other reason I really love this technique is that it's almost like self-healing. When you put on the acrylic, it soaks in the fabric, you immediately put another layer over the top of the fabric and it's sealed. I really don't like the idea of not being able to clean, spray clean. Um, I just like things sealed so they don't grab the dust. We've got the ability to seal as you're going glue and seal in one and if you really really want to seal over the top I use this spray lacquer you can do coats and coats of this it's one job and it's all done I just love the way that it's just so simple so let's get on with it just before we get started on gluing the floral material with the acrylic polyurethane the limitation of this will be anything of a certain weight. I want to trim her, uh, for example, when I've finished gluing the other bits. This is just to clean off that edge. This is a beautiful leather strip. Had this safe for a long time and it will just come and finish her off. Anything to do with leather or a certain weight beyond, say, a thick cotton, I would use the contact adhesive. So, you know, thin layer on both sides, let it dry five, 10 minutes, and then the contact is complete. Anything like bias binding, anything like a thick, even a t-shirt material can be used with, the, with this acrylic, but anything beyond that, I think we have to go to a contact adhesive. For example, on the pig here, all of that glued on beautiful, but this leather strip here to form a bit of a jawline, that was done with the contact adhesive, as will be his ears. Here's a pig I've done. All of her is done with the contact adhesive. So this is the same old leather coat, pink leather, beautifully finished. It's a 1970s coat. She has all these little bits of leather and then I've just painted over the leather, stamped the leather. So um, on with the lady. Right, here we go. So paintbrush, I always use cheapies. I can not worry about them. The concrete's quite hard on the brushes. Basically, liberally paint that. This is looking quite cloudy in there, but it does dry clear. One of the great things about the fabric decoupage as opposed to the paper decoupage is feeling that it won't fade as quickly or as much. So you can see that's now stuck on. I use my fingers a lot. You can also use the brush and that isn't enough to stick it. You really have to come straight on with the other layer and it can still move. You, you can move it for quite a long time. We're in the middle of winter here now, so this is gonna dry quite slowly. I did one in summer when it was drying within five minutes and you had to move quicker. The other thing I'm doing just at the moment is getting the frayed bits, which you can see there. You can cut them off later when it's all dry with the scalpel. What you need is that material to be completely covered both sides. You can position it like this. I could take it off. I can reposition it. You have plenty of time to get it exactly where you want, getting it laid flat. Because on, on this woman, we'll be going on the rounds all the time. If it's not sticking, you don't have enough on it. So the frayed bits, I would just work out at the end. They are the only annoying bit of this whole job. Now that one is lying flat. There's no air bubbles, but happy with that. It'll be like on with the next piece. Wouldn't really matter where you go. Probably the safest thing to do is do the biggest ones first, because then you've got room to change your mind or even omit some little bloom like this one here might become irrelevant. really nice. 
So really, it's that easy. It's really enjoyable, it's very satisfying. This is the worst thing about the, the material is the frayed edges here, get it well stuck. And then when it's completely dry, come back with a sharp Stanley knife blade or a scalpel, take it off dry, take off some of the edges. It does look a bit darker when it's wet and then it dries back to light. So uh, it's not gonna take long. They didn't take long to cut out. If you're taking out the exact flower and completely omitting the background, it does take quite a bit longer with sharper scissors. It's a wonderful thing because it does become one and I love decoupage anyway, but there's lovely fabrics around. Don't like just to keep them in a plastic bin. I just love the effect. It's beautiful. There are some beautiful fabrics. I know as a teenager that we didn't have fabrics uh, that we have now. You know, you can find so much in the op shops. You can find beautiful silk. You can, you can just think of it as a treasure. And weirdly, although I've been doing mosaic work all my life with tile, I still collected fabrics fabric, even though I knew it wouldn't look good on me, it didn't fit me, I, I couldn't walk past it. I go through op shops and I'd just be like mesmerized with prints. So have fun and I'll just continue on and you'll see this finished. for now and I'll see you in the next video.